the name Nigeria was given to us by Lord Lugard's side chick. She later became his wife, oh, wow. but at the time she was his side chick. She was the one who named Nigeria, Nigeria. Part of the reason we haven't been able to work is because we've been flawed since our inception. We didn't even name ourselves. Say it louder so they all can hear you. What's your name? Toby. My name is Toby. Hi. That's a good nigga. You know, some people might say that's superficial, but I think that is fundamental in charting your own course, right? Some people have said we should go by Songhai because of the Songhai Empire. Some people, you know, have, have recommended other things. And then you'll see people like Muhammad Ali who decided not to go by Cassius Clay or um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you know. And at the time people thought, oh, that was dumb. That was, you know. Yeah. But there's something very powerful about like, this was my given name. This is not my name. Would you argue that Johnson was a slave name? Absolutely. And that other American Africans should drop theirs? Ultimately, yes. The reason I pause when I ask that question is sometimes I think as African people, whether we're in America, Africa, the Caribbean, or throughout the diaspora, sometimes we focus too much mm -hmm. on superficialities yeah. as opposed to substantive change. Yeah. So in other words, every African in the diaspora could drop our European names take an African name, and we should. Mm -hmm. But is that the priority? No, freedom, justice, and liberation is the priority. And similarly, the black manosphere is just a, the black side of a white person's idea. Because I've, I've been trying to wrestle with how can a space that claims to be a black thing not be pro-black? And I realized that the genesis of it was never pro-black. The manosphere didn't care about black people. So instead of creating a separate space that was interested in the progress of black people, black men in particular, we really were just the bastard stepson of the white manosphere. And that's why there is so much confusion about what it is that we're doing here, right? So I think it's time that we search our hearts and figure out what the hell are we trying to do? Are what we just trying this? to be McDonald's? Because McDonald's is already taken. Or are we trying to start our own thing and create bylaws, a mission statement, a vision statement? What is it that we're doing here? Or are we just complaining about women? To, to your point, the reason it's like herding cats is because we can't get on the same page. And we, we say, oh, we're not a monolith as if that's a good thing. You should be a monolith if you're trying to get some stuff done. You should have a clear structure. You should have some kind of hierarchy, some kind of seniority. But unfortunately, we look around and it's just men bickering. To my point earlier, that's why I was so disappointed by our quote unquote leaders, because instead of having the larger conversation about cultural gatekeeping, we were having a witch hunt conversation of whether or not she's racist, right? We were having a witch hunt conversation of whether or not she's intentionally this or intentionally that. And my point has always been, she is inconsequential. She is, she is the symptom, not the disease, right? And for us, what we need to get in the habit of doing is addressing the macro issues and putting things in place preemptively to prevent things like this from happening. So we're not constantly triggered every time a white person white persons because yeah. we let them into the door. We're so used to white validation that, you know, and, and that's part of my critique of people like MTR. Right, because you'll you'll see their reluctance to come on black people's panels. Black people are actually working for black people, but if somebody has the bag or somebody has you know the audience that you want, you'll just haphazardly go over there and you know it's every man for himself. That's how we think about things, and we we in all honesty don't even have the luxury to do that. But for whatever reason, we think we do. This picture was taken 45 years after slavery was abolished in the United States. This particular image is, is symbolic of our disposition as black people, not just in this country, but internationally. Um, obviously, I'm Nigerian. Some people would call me a carpetbagger. <laughs> I didn't know what that meant until like two days ago. But my approach to this conversation is very, very international because I believe that Black progress 
everywhere it cannot happen unless we are tied together in some for some for some shared interest you know for for a common goal and a common cause so i'm a pan-africanist what's so striking about this image is it begs the question are they more afraid of what's behind the gates or what's beyond the gates right because even though the gates are open they are still reluctantly on the side with the gate closed Hey, if you've made it all the way to the end, please click that like and subscribe button. Also share this with somebody that you think would gain value from it. Also shout out to our Patreon executive producers and VIP members. Make sure you head over to Patreon and check out some exclusive content. A lot more happens on Patreon that can happen on YouTube. So please uh, consider becoming a member there. Click the thumbnail at the top if you want the full video. Click the thumbnail at the bottom if you want a video that's closely related to this. Again, like, share, subscribe. Appreciate you guys for watching. Check out some more of our content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.